Okay, people, let's start the meeting. Before we do that, though, uh, could you fill out the attendance form, please? Thank you. Okay. So this is the second lesson of the intermediate track, and today we'll be looking at more UGA stuff. So last meeting, we looked at some of the basic UGA stuff, and we'll be reviewing that in a bit. But after we're done with that, we'll be looking at more of that. We'll be covering the last redirect directive, V4, and we'll be looking at new components. So again, this is the lesson track we're on lesson two. Um, so times when we have help available, you can ask in the meeting, you can uh, hit us up on Slack, or you can come to our office hours on Wednesday, six to seven. This is our teaching staff. And I don't think we need to look at this the second time around. So okay, let's start with the review. What exactly is Vue.js? Well, Vue.js is a framework in JavaScript that allows us to modify web pages using JavaScript again. And uh, it's really useful for uh, single page websites. But how do you add Vue.js to a website? Well, it's really easy. All you have to do is put this script tag in the head section of the HTML and it's voila. All right, let's take a look at the, some of the V directors that we uh, looked at the last time around. So first, vbind. vbind will bind an HTML attribute to the value of a JS variable. So take a look at this syntax example here. Here, vbind is binding this SRC, this SRC attribute to the variable sum data. So that just means that SRC is going to be equal to whatever information is stored in sum data. That's all that is to it. VFO conditionally renders something to the screen. So if you take a look at the example syntax here, uh, the VF is pointing to a variable called should see. So if, if should see is true, then you'll see this text printed. Some text is here, you'll see that printed. If, we, if the should see is false, then you won't see this at all. This will be invisible. Third, V model. V model just tracks input into a text box and saves it to a variable in JavaScript. So in this syntax example, V model is equal to a variable called message. So all that means is that whatever you type into the uh, text box is saved into the variable message. So if I type A, B, C, D, E, F, now message is going to be equal to A, B, C, D, E, F. And lastly, Vion. Vion listens for events like button click and activates GS code. So for, look at this example syntax here. The Vion listens for a button click and uh, says activate the function method name. So when that click happens, that function is activated and uh, JavaScript runs the code that's uh, inside that function. And here we have an example view instance. So the L parameter, which is where uh, the root element is, data, where we have all the variables, methods, where we have the functions without a return value, and computed, where we have functions with a return value. Okay, now that we've taken a look at that, let's uh, get into the stuff for this lesson. So the last V directive, V4. Excuse me. So what's V4 directive? V4 just creates multiple HTML elements based on the uh, elements in the JavaScript array. So V4 is, um, useful for every single element, and it needs a key for every one of the elements in the list. Let's take a look at exactly what that means. So you see this example syntax here. In JavaScript, we have a list called array, and v4 basically just cycles through that list, calling uh, each of the item in array, and uh, each of these items should have a key. So vbind basically gives it a key, and uh, it prints out whatever the item is. I realize this is not a very good uh, way to take a look at that. So uh, let's take a look at that in, uh, in the demo file. So here we have demo1.html and demo1.js. You'll uh, have that in the GitHub that you have access to. So here we are basically trying to cycle through a list. We're basically saying, OK, uh, get us the items in the list and print them out, right? So we're basically thinking instead of having, um, say, five, if there's five items in the list, instead of putting five li tags, we're just trying to do it in one li tag. So list in the JavaScript is defined as this. Uh, there's three elements. 
you'll notice that each of the elements has an ID and a DHT. So the ID is, is the key and uh, each, ele each element of a list needs to have a key. That's really important. So here we're basically uh, saying circle through the list uh, for the key, take the ID section of each of the uh, elements and print out the TXT section of each of them. So once you do that, you get, excuse me. Once you do that, you have all three of them printed out with just one line of um, li tag. And that's basically how v4 works. Now that we've done that, uh, I just want you to do a little exercise using uh, V4 and the uh, new stuff that we learned the last time. So just make a page that has a text box and a button. And when the button is clicked, the text that you put inside the text box is going to be added as a list item that's printed out in the page. It's, this is a little something, like, like a very basic something like what you're going to be doing in the final project. So we thought this would be a really good experience. And uh, a little hint, you're going to have, want to use the push function to add elements to the uh, JavaScript array. Uh, so if you're here, just uh, pause on this maybe and uh, work on it, maybe give yourself 10, 15 minutes and uh, see how that goes here. Okay, so I'm going to assume that you've worked on it and you've got something working or uh, you worked on it and uh, you have some doubts and stuff and that's perfectly all right. Uh, we'll take a look at a sample code that we wrote for this exercise. So before we look at this stuff, let me just show you how it works, right? So, so here we have, excuse me for a sec. Here we have just one element in here, and I'll add the. Oh, sorry, <laughs> the carpet. So, it is yeah. So just every time you just put something here, it gets added onto here. So how exactly did we make that work? Well, going down to here, we use the uh, same thing as in the demo one file. We just uh, put in a v4 here. We said v4 to do in to do list, and the id is to do.id and print out to do.txt, right? Basically, the same thing as before. We put in a text box that uh, models out to a variable called input text, and we basically said if the button is clicked, um, run the function add to do. So, what exactly is that? Input text right now is an empty string. Um, to do this, the list we are circling through. Right now, it just has one element that's um, ID to zero and it's the text clean the house. But we're going to be adding more and more elements to this. And uh, we created a variable for latest ID, which is right now zero. Because we need to, because each of the elements need to have a separate ID, uh, we need this to circle through that. So, what exactly does add to do do? When the button is clicked, it basically says push. It basically says uh, push uh, this uh, this stuff into the uh, to do list. So latest ID is increased by one every time. So for the first element, this becomes one, and uh, whatever is in, is in the input field gets sent up here, and the second element, uh, when the second element comes around, it gets increased to two, and uh, what there is in the input text field again since gets sent up here. And that's basically how it works. Okay, moving back on to this stuff. That's basically all we had for V directives. And Going on to the interesting stuff, new components. So components are like, they're basically like reusable instances in view, which have their own custom HTML elements. And they, they basically look like instances with their own data section, methods computed, and stuff like that. 
But before we can actually use components, we need to register them. And this happens in the JavaScript uh, file. Uh, we, we register them using this format. So they have six parameters that you need to fill out. The first of these is component name. So that's basically any name that you want to give it. Uh, but then that'll be how you'll be uh, referencing it in the HTML file. So the convention is that it should be lowercase and give up case. But uh, if you want, you can just give it one, one word and no one will see the uh, props are the parameters that you'll be passing in to the component from the HTML file. And um, I mean, they're optional. We don't really need to have them, but um, if you're maybe connecting it to the uh, main view instance, like we'll show you in demo two, then uh, you'll probably find it helpful. The template is uh, where you basically have all your HTML stuff for, for the view component. So it's basically like a mini HTML page and uh, it needs to be encircled by single codes. However, it's kind of difficult to have everything that you want to put in a single line. So uh, the, the convention is to use the brev letter instead. It's the uh, key about your tab on the standard keyboard. And so you just put a brev before you start your HTML stuff and you put a brev afterwards and uh, that finishes it up. Data section is uh, again where we put all the variables. Uh, it's, it's the same as the as a view instance, except you need to have uh, this uh, format here. Once you put data, you need to have you need to say it's a function, and uh, you need to put all the variables inside a return tag. And again, methods and uh, compute the same as in a normal view instance. Okay, let's see exactly what that means in uh, demo program two. Just a second. So in demo two, we basically have, uh, we basically defining three view components, basic component, prop component, and data component. And we're calling them in here. So basic component, uh, we're basically doing nothing with this. We just, we just got a template HTML stuff that we're running and that's all there is to it. A prop component, it's a basic component that we're including some arguments from the main HTML file. And then a data component, we, uh, we're trying to include some function stuff. So let's see how this works. So I just call basic component and it just inserts whatever whatever HTML is in here in, into this area on line 18. For prop component, I basically say uh, the arguments text should be equal to, equal to this value and another prop should be equal to this value here. So what view does here is, it says, okay, as so a text is going to be equal to Fox. What exactly does Fox mean? it will go to the main view instance and you'll see that Fox is actually this string over here. So it will display, it will go down to text and it'll display that string over here. So this will be quick down box or whatever. And it'll be the same for another prop. So if we run demo two, we'll see that it says click on fox and lazy dog instead of text and another prop or just fox and dog. And moving to the data component, it passes in a, it basically just passes in text again. So it prints out the text, the same as in prop component. And we see that displayed in our website here. The text that we have in is called button. So it will just see that go down here and button says button. So we'll just print that button, which is super cool. And um, it also has another you know, value inside mustache formatting called click. So click is a variable that we define down here in the data section, which is zero. So what this does is it listens to the click and it um, works on this function here. And every time this button is clicked, uh, the variable click goes up by one, and that is uh, reflected in this HTML section. So if we try that out here, you see that it, it just keeps changing the button. 
And uh, the cool thing about uh, view components is that they're reusable. So uh, you, you can basically define it once and call it as many times as you want. And uh, they're going to be like separate components. They're going to be modular. So whatever, so you see that data component has been defined here twice. And uh, whatever I do to the first one is not going to affect the second one at all. Whatever I do to the second one is not going to touch the first one at all. So that was basically all there was to demo to. Let's click back on the And moving on to uh, a more cool part of the view components. So component slots. So slot is basically like another section of HTML code that you can add to your uh, main mini HTML stuff in the template section. You do that by uh, putting in the slot and close slot tag. So this comes in handy when you've got a parent component and a child component. So when you use the slot tag, it basically tells the uh, parent component to take everything that's in the template section of the child component and shove it wherever the uh, slot tag is, what, what the location that is. And lastly, custom events. So custom event is basically used for sending uh, information from child component to the parent component. So this is literally the format for that. You just do this dot dollar emit and uh, whatever the name of uh, that event is and whatever value you want to send. So sometimes the value can be just a variable or an array or whatever you prefer. Let's take a look at how this pans out in demo program three. So in demo three, we've defined two components. We have, um, we have the parent component, which is called demo component and the child component here. You'll notice that the uh, child component is again inside the demo component, inside the opening and closing tags. And this is really important because you won't be able to use the uh, you won't be able to use the slot stuff and uh, the custom events if you if you don't do this. If you if you've got it separate like uh, uh, like the components here, that that just won't work. So here we basically just. We basically just have a template tag here and the slot section here will bring uh, these three lines up to here. So let's see how that pans out. Let me see. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. So you'll see that this stuff was in the parent component, as was uh, this stuff. But um, the two buttons and this paragraph tag was in the child component. It just gets shoved in here because the slot tag was uh, between these two lines. So what exactly is happening within here? So when the inner button is clicked, uh, excuse me, when, so when we click this, uh, let, let's take a look at the first button here, the one called send press. So then we click that button, it uh, basically activates the function called send press, which emits um, press here. So in the, in the HTML file, we basically uh, listen for press, uh, the press event when it happens, we use beyond to activate the handle press function in our main view instance. And when that happens, we basically increase the variable called click count by one. So why exactly does that matter? Like, what does that have to do with uh, the click variable here? So in the parent component, we basically say that click should be equal to click count. So when JavaScript is running this, it basically substitutes click count for whatever is in here. So every time we click it, this should increase by one or two or three or whatever. So that's exactly what happens here. Is it increases however many times I press it. For the second button, uh, it, it redirects us to the send other function and it emits the event other. So we, we, we have a beyond that listens for that too. And it runs the function handle other in the main view instance. And in handle other, we just uh, putting it out in the console. Um, so let's see if that works. No. 
open documents. Thank you. Awesome. And send an error. We see that uh, whenever we press in this button, this text is printed out to console.log. And yeah, that was basically all for demo three. So we have a second checkpoint for you. So why don't you just modify the, uh, the, the program we made in the first checkpoint to include uh, view components, slots, and custom events. Like make it do the same thing or make it do uh, something more, whatever you prefer. But um, make sure you have components and uh, maybe parent and a child component and custom events and stuff. Cool. Okay, let's take like uh, 10, 15 minutes to do that. Uh, just pause the video here while we're doing that. And uh, yeah, in, in a few minutes or so, I'll, I'll uh, display the sample code that I wrote. And if you have any doubts or just want to check your code, you can take a look at that. Just, just take a pause here and work on your own code. Okay, let's, uh, I'll, I'll display the sample code I wrote for this checkpoint. I assume uh, you worked on it and uh, either finished it or you have some doubts about it. And let's see what, what it looks like here. So first I'll just show you what it looks like. This is basically just a really simple program I wrote. Uh, it basically just, um, whatever I add onto the input box gets added onto the list. And that this tells me how many times I've clicked the button. So how exactly am I making this work? And how exactly have I added everything that will make this work? Because you can just make this work with a simple menu instance. Let's take a look at that then. So in the HTML, again, I just added a parent component and a child component. And um, I've got the count happening in the parent component. And I basically said uh, the variable click should redirect the click count down here, as you can see up here. And in the child component, I basically said listen for press, which uh, and then that happens, activate the function handle press in the main view instance. So, I've got all the uh, the main stuff from our first checkpoint in the child component. So it's got the list and the button and the input text box. So whenever I type anything in here, it, it gets added onto the list. And um, when I click the button that adds the um, text from the text box onto the list, it also emits something called press here. And um, when the child when the child component listens for press it basically goes on and um, activates the handle press function, which increases click count. And when click count is increased, um, it increases this uh, value here, which gets displayed in, in our web page. So I'll, I'll have this uh, code up in uh, GitHub that you all have access to for both checkpoints. And uh, if you all have any doubts about this afterwards, uh, you're, free, you're free to just hit us up on Slack. Uh, somebody will get to you really soon or uh, come to our office hours on Wednesday. And um, let's move on to the presentation. Yeah, definitely just come to the office hours, hit us up on Slack and uh, please do give us some feedback. Thanks for coming.